Well, good evening. Welcome to our Sunday evening service tonight. And we thank you for joining and tuning in with us. Had a good service this morning in God's house and glad to be able to meet with you at least online tonight. Hopefully soon, maybe the month of August, we'll get back to meeting in person as well. Uh, but we do thank you for tuning in tonight. We're looking at the topic tonight in our uh, Bible message uh, about living the joy-filled lifestyle. Living the joy-filled, I want you to notice that last word, lifestyle. It, it's, a, it's a lifestyle. It's not a circumstantial thing. It's not an off, off and on, up and down thing. It's a lifestyle. I used to have an old show called Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, and it would show you how they live their lives and their daily interactions. Uh, we as Christians ought to be known as people of joy, and that joy ought to be a lifestyle that's exhibited every day in our lives. So I look at that topic tonight, living the joy-filled lifestyle. And I'm going to pray with you real quick, and then we'll jump right into the message tonight. Father, we love you tonight again. We thank you for all you do. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you we can have joy uh, because we know Christ is our Savior, because heaven's our home, because God is good. Uh, Lord, we can have a great amount of joy in our lives. We pray now that you help us to be people of joy that's uh, not circumstantial, uh, Lord, but is a, is a daily joy uh, based on the benefits of the Lord Jesus Christ and his love for us in our lives. Uh, Lord, we just pray that we'll learn from this. May we make it a lifestyle. And may you bless the teaching and the preaching this evening. May it be helpful to us, we pray. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Living the joy-filled lifestyle. There was a famous preacher in the 20th century, a uh, very well-known Bible teacher and preacher. And he made this statement. I want to read it to you. And then uh, uh, let you sink in for just a second and see if you agree or disagree. I'll tell you where I stand on it. He made this statement. You cannot get up in the morning and say... This is the day in which I will be full of joy. I'm going to be very happy today. I have made up my mind to have lots of joy. What do you think of that statement? You agree? You disagree? As a pastor this morning or this evening, uh, I, I look at that statement. Here's my thought. Either you have joy or you don't. Uh, the worldly person can have synthetic joy, uh, maybe joy on the outside, but that joy is the plaything of their environment. It's a, it's a slave to their circumstances. When, when circumstances go down, they lose their joy. When circumstances are up, they have that superficial joy. For the Christian, we have joy, period. That joy is, import, is imparted to us by the Lord Jesus Christ. It flows through us. No matter what the conditions are like around us, no matter what the circumstances are in life, our joy is not dependent on our surroundings. It's not the slave of our circumstances. Our joy is the gift of God given to us upon salvation. We are people of joy. Joy is a reoccurring theme throughout the Bible. It's something we need a lot of. It's something the Bible talks about often. It's something I think we as children of God need to be reminded of every now and then. And we need to even remind our face to show the joy that we have in our lives. I'm going to give you some scripture tonight. Uh, we're going to follow through several, several scriptures tonight just on that topic of joy and rejoicing. And then we'll get into the message tonight and follow through the outline. So let's look at some scripture. Let's go to Nehemiah chapter 12 first. Nehemiah chapter 12, verse number 43. Also that day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced. For God had made them rejoice with a great joy. The wives also and the children rejoiced, so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off. That's a, that's a pretty a good deal amount of joy. Uh, it was heard from afar off and everybody participated. Look at Psalm 149, verse number 5. Psalm 149, 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Look at the next verse, Galatians chapter 5, verse number 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is, and of course there's a list of them, uh, but what's the second one mentioned? Joy. That's a fruit of the Spirit. Look at 1 John chapter 1, and verse number 4. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. Look at Romans chapter 12, verse 15. The Bible encourages us to rejoice with them that do rejoice. Proverbs chapter 24, in verse number 17, the Bible says this, Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Uh, so we have a correction even in the area of our joy. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 6, the great uh, love chapter. It talks all about charity. And it, it says this, Charity or love rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in Truth. Look at two more verses real quick. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 4. Paul says this to the church of Philippi. Rejoice in the Lord 
always, and again I say rejoice. What double emphasis? Always, and again, let me repeat it to you, have joy. Look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. One last verse. Rejoice for just a short time. Rejoice, no, it's supposed to say rejoice ever more. Rejoice evermore. Christian, I think it's very clear from Scripture. Uh, just a few of the verses we read. Of course, there are a ton more. Uh, I believe uh, we listen to the Scripture that we've read and we look at others. Uh, we as Christians are to be people of joy. How do we do that? How do we let that show in our lives? Uh, how does the world see us and say, hey, they are people of joy? Uh, I want to give you three statements tonight. And as I make these three statements, we'll talk a little bit about each, other. each one has some scripture to go with it. But I want to give you three statements about us being people of joy and making sure it's not an up and down thing, a circumstantial thing, but making sure it's a lifestyle of joy. So let's look at three statements. Number one, let me give you the first statement about joy. You can choose it. You can choose it. Let me look at uh, uh, several, about three, three scripture verses with this, okay? You can choose it. Look at Psalm 32, verse number 11. Psalm 32, 11. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. We see a command here to be joyful, but you see that kind of the condition is you'll do that if you're upright in heart. Look at Psalm chapter 5, verse number 11. Psalm chapter 5, verse 11. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Again, that's, that's us choosing to put our trust in Him. Rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. Look at one more psalm, chapter 16, verse number 11. Thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence. By the way, that's a decision that we choose to be in His presence. Is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Christian, as we seek to follow the Holy Spirit in our lives, He will, according to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, begin to produce in us then the fruit of the Spirit. One of those fruits is joy. Joy. Make the choice to have joy. Now here's the thing. As a child of God, that joy is instilled in us. That joy is a part of our salvation. Uh, it's there, but I have to choose to have it. I have to choose to say, hey, I'm going to allow the joy of the Lord to flow through me in such a way that it's evident in my life. Ask God to fill you with His Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit then to fill you with His joy. Look at the Word of God tonight and say this. This is true. His Word is true. I can rejoice because the Bible is true. Look at your circumstances and, and maybe preach at them a little bit tonight. When the, when the negative or the hard times come and you want to be a person of joy, become a little bit of a preacher tonight. Look at, your, look at your circumstances and preach to them and say something like this. Hey, circumstances, Jesus is still Lord. God is not for me. He's against me. He has promised to never leave me nor forsake me. He's working all things out for good. He's not a man that he should lie. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I am more than a conqueror. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Rejoice in the fact that God is still God. And he has ever been true about him. And everything we know about him will continue to be true. No exceptions. You can choose to rejoice by looking at the truth of who he is and what he has promised to do for you. And the past blessings you have in your life from him and the promised blessings that you have in your life as well. You can choose joy. You can choose joy. Number two, let me make a second statement. Number two, you can use it. You can choose it and you can use it. Look at Nehemiah chapter 8, verse number 10. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse number 10. The joy of the Lord is your what? Strength. That's something we can use. The joy that the Lord provides for us in our life is a benefit to us that then we can turn around and use in the service of the King of Kings. Joy is for your benefit. Joy is not for God's benefit, although I'm sure he's rather talk to us when we're in a joyous mood than in a grumpy mood. But joy is for our benefit. It's something I need, and when God supplies it, it's something I can use in my life. Think about it. Uh, there are things in life that you cannot see that God is doing. But if you could see that God was doing them, what would it cause you to do? Rejoice over them. Rejoice over them. Uh, so, so rejoice. You, you can choose it, but you can use it. Use it for your benefit. 
Nehemiah reminds us that there's power in joy. It's like a vitamin taken to make us strong. It's a gateway which God's power can then flow through us when we're people of joy. We can rejoice because God knows what we don't know. He can do what we can't do. And in the end, we get the last laugh. We win. God's side win. The devil loses. We can rejoice in that. Use the joy that God has given us to strengthen us in our life. Use it to, to encourage others. Use it to be a blessing so that we can do more for the cause of Christ. Use the joy He's given us. Don't hide it. Don't store it. Don't waste it. Use it. Choose it, number one, and then use it. I heard the story of a, uh, uh, of a high school teacher. And uh, right before the semester started, he, he uh, fell and he injured his back. And uh, this was back in the day. And uh, as, as the repair process went forth and the doctor started helping him, they ended up wrapping an entire plaster cast around the upper part of his body. Uh, that cast then fit under his shirt. Uh, and really, because of the size of this teacher, he was a smaller man, you really couldn't notice the caster plast under his shirt. He gets to school that first uh, semester day, and uh, the cast is under his shirt, and he's wearing his, his tie, and he finds himself assigned to one of the toughest groups of kids in the entire school. He walks very confidently into the rowdy classroom. He opens up the window near his desk as wide as he could, allows the fresh air to come in. And he sits down at his desk that first hour and begins to busy himself with some desk work after he's assigned the classroom what to do. He notices as he's working at his desk, the classroom gets a little bit uh, unruly. So he corrects them, he admonishes them, and several times this happens and he corrects them. Well, as he's sitting there working, having to correct these students, he also feel like, realizes that as he's trying to work, that strong breeze was coming in, and it kept making his tie flip around back and forth, back and forth, and he was getting annoyed with the tie moving, and then, of course, being annoyed with the classroom disruptions, and he kept rearranging and rearranging the tie, and as he rearranged his tie, the class would get a little more unruly. Finally, he had had enough. So this teacher stood up, and he grabbed the stapler on his desk, and he took that stapler and went bam, 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 bam to his tie and stapled it to his chest. Discipline was not a problem for the rest of the semester. The class had no idea what had happened, but it sure did solve the discipline problems. You know, we have a God that, as far as our human eyes goes, does a lot of things behind the scenes. Uh, under the surface, if you will, protecting us so that we can stand up for the devil, uh, protecting us uh, so that we can deal with life's trials and persecutions and problems. Uh, and, and he wants us to be joyful and unaffected uh, by the problems that are thrown at us. We can choose to be joyful, and we can then use the joy that God has for us. I love what Paul wrote to the Corinthian church in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 4. He says, Great is my boldness of speech towards you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. Well, that doesn't seem to make sense. But Paul is simply saying this. I don't care about the circumstances. God has given me joy to strengthen me. And in the midst of what I perceive as negative circumstances, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to be joyful in the Lord. I'm going to allow my joy to show. People are going to know that I'm an excited, joy-filled Christian, even in the hard times. In our tough times as well as our good times, joy is a great source of power and strength to help us fight the enemy, to help us deal with trouble. We can use it to the glory of God and to magnifying God in our lives if we'll just simply choose it and use it. That's the first two statements. You can choose it. You can lose it. Let me give you the third statement about joy. Number three, you can lose it. You can lose it. You can choose the joy that's already there to allow it to be uh, exemplified in your life. You can then use it for strength. But let me give you a little, a little warning here. You can also lose it. You can also lose it. Let me, let me share with you three quick ways we can lose our joy. Three quick ways we can lose our joy. And what I want you to understand is this. The joy is still there, and, and it's never God taking it from us. Uh, these three ways, if we truly think about them, are things that we bring into our own lives. We cause this loss of joy. Let me give you, let me give you three things. First of all, letter A, uh, when you think about losing it, we can lose the joy when we harbor unconfessed sin. Uh, we harbor unconfessed sin. Psalm 51, verse 12, David says this, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. You see, David, in this particular writing of Psalm 51, uh, he had been caught in terrible sin. 
He, he had done some, uh, some atrocity, some iniquity, whatever you want to call it in his life. He was guilty before God. And he's coming to God in Psalm 51 and pouring out his heart and confessing his sin and confessing his need to get right with God. And he comes to, 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 to God in verse number 12 and he says, I've lost my joy and it's my fault. I've lost my joy because I've fallen into sin. There's some sin I need to confess before you, God. And as I confess my sin, oh God, I beg you, restore my joy. You see, Christian, if you're not joyful tonight, maybe we need to do a little heart check tonight. Maybe we need to look at, at sin in my life and say, is there something there that's between my soul and the Savior that has caused me to lose my joy? Unconfessed sin is a way we can lose our joy. Let me give you the second one, letter B. Letter B, we can lose our joy when we cause conflict and lose our peace. When we cause conflict and lose our peace. Proverbs 12, verse 20, Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil. But to the counselors of peace is joy. To the counselors of peace is joy. The only thing worse than not having joy is stealing somebody else's. Uh, stealing somebody else's. Man, when you cause conflict and, and it causes you to lose the peaceful situation, like, you know what many times goes out the window with peace? Joy. I'm not peaceful, so I'm not joyful. They kind of go hand in hand. And, and so again, if I'm going to lose my joy because of unconfessed sin, we saw that. But I can also lose it because I, 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 I've been in a conflict. I've lost my peace in that situation. And then my joy has gone out the window with it. Uh, again, it, it's bad enough when I lose my joy. It's even worse when I steal somebody else's and I bring them down with me. I heard about a, uh, a new business and uh, they had just opened a brand new business site. And uh, some flowers uh, were ordered to be sent to this business uh, during their brand new opening of their site. And uh, the business received the flowers. They opened up the card and the card said, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Boy, the angry, or the owner was, was very upset. He knew that's not what he had ordered. And he called the florist to complain. And he said, it's such a mistake. It's, uh, I can't believe you did this. And this is a new business. And uh, I'm very upset. And the florist, after listening, kind of tried to calm the man down. He said, sir, I'm really sorry for the mistake. And uh, think about this, though. Rather than getting angry with me, would you imagine this with me? Somewhere, there's a funeral taking place. And the flowers have a card on it that says, congratulations on your new location. Again, conflict robs us of our peace. Many times robs us of our joy. Well, we would do well to learn to rest in peace. I'm not talking about death like we're talking about there, but to rest in peace. The peace that's provided for us, the past of all understanding God gives us. If we don't rest in peace, we, we many times lose our peace. In losing our peace, we lose our joy. We can lose it. How? Unconfessed sin. Conflict causing us to lose our peace. Let me get this last thing. Letter C. Letter C. We can lose our joy when we treat people unfairly. When we treat people unfairly. Look at Proverbs 21 15. It is joy to the just to do judgment. But destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. It is joy to the just to do judgment. Folks, here's what we need to understand tonight. When I treat somebody else unfairly because I'm having a bad day, or I treat somebody else unfairly because somebody treated me unfairly, or I, I uh, treat somebody improperly because somebody gave me a hard time, I lash out at so-and-so because so-and-so lashed out at me. What I need to understand is this. When I treat people poorly, and when I treat people unfairly, I'm opening the door, door for me to lose my joy. Lose my joy. Uh, how we treat people is so important in life. Everybody needs to be treated right because at any moment of any day, that person you're dealing with could be going through a very tough, difficult storm in their life. We don't know what people are facing. Let's treat them fairly. Uh, let's show them the joy that the Lord has provided in our lives by treating them fairly, thus not losing our joy. So let me close with this. Let me close with this. Let's first of all tonight, let's make the decision to choose joy. Choose to rejoice, uh, looking to the Holy Spirit as the supplier of our joy. Again, it's not our circumstances. We don't manufacture it ourselves. We choose to believe God's word and God's outcome and God's promise of joy in our lives. Let's choose joy. Secondly, uh, if you've lost your joy tonight, 
Maybe it's because of unconfessed sin. Uh, ask God to deal with that. Re repent and ask Him to restore you. Uh, maybe, again, it's a conflict, and because of that you've lost your peace. Get the situation fixed. If you've treated some people unfairly, go to them. Get the situation remedied and, and rectified. Let's look, use the joy of the Lord to give us strength. Let's use the joy of the Lord to provide us with sufficient power in our lives to live the joy-filled lifestyle, to make a difference in this earth for the kingdom of God to come. Let's be people of joy. Living the joy-filled lifestyle. It's not circumstantial. It's not up and down. It's not peaks and valleys. My joy is made full in Jesus Christ. Let's be people of joy. Let's choose it. And let's use it, and let's not lose it. Father, Lord, I pray you'll take what's been said tonight. Would you use it in our lives and in our hearts to help us, to encourage us, to challenge us. May we be people of joy tonight. May we be people who use and choose the joy that you have for us. May we use it in our lives as a source of power and strength to better serve you. And God, help us not to lose it. And if we do, help us to deal with it properly like David did, uh, to confess the sin, to right the conflict. Uh, Lord, to treat people properly, I pray. Uh, Lord, we pray that you use the lesson now to help us and to encourage us and to grow us in our relationship with you. Father, as we close tonight, we just ask for your blessing uh, on our lives tonight. Uh, bless us the remainder of this week. Bring us back again uh, on Wednesday, Lord, as we open your word. We study uh, the Bible again Wednesday. We just pray that you'll bless that time. Uh, Father, again, we thank you for all you do. Thank you for Jesus who died to save us. And uh, thank you for our eternal home in heaven. We love you. And we ask all these things now in your name and for your sake. Amen. Thank you for joining us. And uh, tune in again with us on Wednesday night at 7 on our Facebook channel or our YouTube page. And uh, we look forward to seeing you there. God bless you.